the world is overwhelming enough to return to prison. It's actually incredibly unfortunate that there are so few programs out there that help ex-convicts find a foothold once they are out of prison. Too many are so overwhelmed by the changes they see that it makes them try to return to prison as a defense mechanism. Randall Lee Church is one such convict who, after getting out, was so confused by modern day life that he was unable to handle his own freedom. In an effort to feel security and familiarity, he then set fire to an abandoned house and turned himself in days later. And he also felt relief, like things were going to be all right again. I didn't know how to use computers or cell phones or the internet. The weirdest thing was walking into a store, like Walmart, and have parents hide their children from me, like I was supposed to jump at them. It was so overwhelming. I was constantly embarrassed by simple things I just didn't know. Solitude amidst nature is the best feeling. Most prisoners find themselves alone in a world buzzing right on past them a feeling of being out of place and out of time. But when they get over this fear, some often find solace in that same solitude, especially if nature is involved. Such ex-con in Oregon goes fly fishing by himself as a means of therapy and reflection. The solitude is such a good thing for me, and being away from the prison politics. Being able to talk to normal people, who aren't preying on people, talking shit, loudmouthing. You're never alone. No privacy, no time to think. Even when you're lying in bed, there's someone making noise right next to you. That's something people take for granted. The solitude to reflect without reacting to something all the time. Astounded by the divisiveness in the news. Michael Santos, an ex-con who served a 45-year prison term, was overawed by the world he was set free in. One of the many things he was shocked by was that news media no longer reported the news. Before he was put in, those news outlets lacked bias and were committed to stating the facts, allowing viewers to form their own opinions. To him, they are more about profit than truth nowadays. Politically, there seems to be a lot more divisiveness in the country. We did not have the fair and balanced services of Fox and in WS when I began serving my sentence, and back then, the invective of AM hate radio had not yet begun. The political fights in the media sound somewhat crazy. Even though I realize those fights cater to fanatics and they are in the business of selling advertising, it surprises me that citizens don't see how a reluctance to work together tears our country apart. From that perspective, aspects of the world do indeed seem a bit out of sorts. Blown away by the sheer barrage of technology. 69-year-old Otis Johnson is an ex-convict who served a 44-year prison sentence for attempted murder. Nowadays, he's just a quiet old man who enjoys people watching at Times Square, busiest crossroad in the most populous city in the United States. And he's constantly astounded by what he sees there, such as people's addiction to their smartphones and our incessant use of earphones. He's also flabbergasted by how much public phone prices have risen from a quarter to a full dollar. Even more so when he was told that no one even used public payphones any longer, everyone already has their own personal phone in their pockets. The joyous freedom of choosing your own food. Incarcerated people are fed specific meals on specific days, somewhat similar to how high school cafeterias operate. For example, they get pizza on Mondays, tacos on Tuesdays, spaghetti on Wednesdays, and so on. 
Not only is the food often subpar, but that menu doesn't change for a very long time, if at all. And because the U.S. has an incredible abundance of food, groceries and restaurants become like Mecca to the convicts who earn their freedom. And because meals are on a set schedule in prison, having no such reminder in real life can cause prisoners to simply forget to eat. They have been so far institutionalized that the incredibly simple process of sitting down for a meal can be a serious source of stress. And it isn't just about having an external source regulating their schedules 24 7, it's the sudden influx of freedom and all the choices that come along with it. One former prisoner who was featured in a NY Times Magazine article explained how he picked up a particular pancake habit in jail. The trick, he said, is to save those packets of peanut butter and spread it on your pancakes the next time there are pancakes. It sounds gross, but it's not. The only way I eat my pancakes now is with peanut butter, cause that's the way I ate them in there, Roby explained. The paralyzing feeling of social isolation. Imagine being taken from your home, right now, and waking up somewhere in a foreign country where you don't know the language and everyone avoids you like the plague. When you search through your pockets, you find an old bill and that's it. That fear you feel about not knowing if you'll make it to morning is a fear that almost every ex-convict admits they feel about earning their freedom. One of the biggest, most powerful things that a newly released prisoner feels is isolation. And the longer they served in prison, the worse it feels. Institutionalization is a very real, very powerful psychological sickness where a former prisoner feels alone and vulnerable in a world that's moving too fast to see. And this isolation occurs physically, as well as mentally people shy their kids away from them, Employers throw their applications in the trash, and families refuse to return their calls. Hey guys, thank you so much for the support and likes and comments down below. And also thank you so much for watching, and I look forward to see you in the next video then. Take care. Bye.